on YouTube. This is Chelsea the Destroyer. Uh, we're going to watch some Disney flu bo- f- 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 food blog. <laughs> We're going to watch Disney news. Uh, very specifically, I know they, they announced like a bunch of like sequels and live actions. I don't, I don't know. Um, but we're going to watch the stuff about Disney parks. So grab your snackies, grab your bevies, let me know what you're eating and drink them down below. And let's get to watching. I got a lot of feelings about Disney parks, by the way, um, because I used to go to Disney a lot. And um, I think they, they kind of priced me out, to be entirely honest. And they priced out like me being able to go with a bunch of friends, and I have a lot of feelings about it. And so we're gonna, I'm probably gonna complain. <laughs> Let's get to going. <clears throat> okay, everybody, Villains Land is officially coming to Magic Kingdom. Hollywood Studios is getting Disney's first suspended Monsters Inc. themed coaster in the new Monsters Inc. land that's coming. Dinosaur is out and Indiana Jones is officially in an Animal Kingdom. Nighttime parades are coming back. We've got a Coco ride, a Spider-Man coaster, the Mandalorian is taking over the Falcon, more cruise ships, and that's not even all of the major announcements from D23. Oh good, so, cruise ships, the other thing that I love. I know they're their Disney food blog. I love this thing. I love this. This is a fork and a knife and a spoon, and that's adorable. I never noticed that, 100%. Like, that's adorable. I love that, actually. <clears throat> hey, everybody. It's AJ for Disney Food Blog. Disney is done with Blue Sky ID. That's a diorama. Is and delivered a ton of details on new projects that are already underway in the Disney theme parks around the world. At this <clears> year's <throat> D23 Expo, Disney released info on over 20 projects happening in Disney World, Disneyland, Disneyland Paris, Shanghai, Hong Kong, and the Disney Cruise Line. Some okay. of these we may... Sheer 100, do you play Pathfinder? If you do, what's your favorite class? I do not play fat Pathfinder, no have been expecting, but there were a few that were complete and total surprises to everyone. Let's kick things off with some really exciting announcements, including the one we have all In been waiting for. The villains are coming to Magic Kingdom. This long and... Can I be honest? Can I be honest? Like, as exciting as this is, like, a new land in Magic Kingdom. Magic Kingdom is already based... Like, they, they're just like, Magic Kingdom is going to be a two-day park. Fuck your four days. It's five days because Magic Kingdom is two days now. And I'm just like, but do you have other perks that could benefit from other shit? Like, <sighs> you could add stuff to other parks. That's all I'm saying. Like, I know you're doing some stuff and like Hollywood Studios, that's like Star Wars related. Some of those shit is it's not hidden. Some of it is, some of it's not. Um... And like, yeah, I guess it would make most the most sense to do like Villains Kingdom in Magic Kingdom, I guess. But I'm a little annoyed about it. To be entirely, entirely possible, I am a little annoyed about it. Anticipated Land has been a talking point among Disney fans for years, and now Disney is finally making it happen. Villains Land is coming to Magic Kingdom. This brand new land will feature shopping, dining, and how oh, Disney World is sabotaging your vacation. I'm tempted. Two brand new rides. This is the, the price? biggest expansion in Magic Kingdom history, and they are about to break ground on this massive project. Details are short on what exactly is coming to this land. There were teases of Ursula and the Evil Queen in the announcement. This multi-acre expansion has officially been confirmed as the area beyond Big Thunder Mountain. Okay, I was like, do not, do not listen to me. Do not motherfucking touch Big Thunder Mountain, okay? That is my favorite ride do not do not destroy my bigger thunder mountain railroad don't do it don't do it it is my favorite ride in every park don't fucking touch my big thunder mountain railroad ride i don't care if i haven't been to disney in years don't fucking touch it okay all right <clears throat> moving on but disney did not give a time frame 
In previous discussions on this area, beyond Big Thunder, it was compared to the Galaxy's Edge or Pandora expansions, which took four and six years to complete from the date of their announcements. This project will likely take quite a few years to complete, so it's likely we'll I mean, be no stepping shit. into Villain's Land sometime between 2028 and 2030, but... Yeah, it's going to take, like, years. Like, we're... Anytime that they're like, we're going to do this thing, it takes minimum, like, three years for them to do it. Maybe they'll surprise minimum. us with construction speed, though they do have have quite a few other projects in the works. The villains aren't the only ones coming to Magic Kingdom. A reimagined area of Frontierland will be themed to Cars and the American West. And I swear to God, if you touch Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, I'm throwing hands. Feature two rides. The first appears to be very similar to Radiator Springs Racers and Disney California Adventure, and it will take us out of Radiator Springs and into the wilderness with mountain trails and wild terrain for a rally race. They also teased a ride for smaller kids, but didn't give many details. We could see a version mm, of Mater's that, Junkard. Uh, hold on. That quality of this video, though. Hey, JT. Teased a ride for smaller kids, but didn't give many details. We could see a version of Mater's Junkyard Jamboree or Luigi's Rollickin' Roadsters, but we need to wait for an official announcement on that one. Now for the controversial part. Cars will be taking over the area of Tom Sawyer Island and the Rivers of America. If you look closely, okay. you can actually see the Liberty Square Riverboat building in the concept art. Okay, because I was like, it's taking over what now? Because that better not be my Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. Um, but the fact that they haven't really been using Tom Sawyer's Island. When I go, Tom Sawyer, I don't even know how to get to Tom Sawyer's Island. I've never been on it, I don't think. And, like, they never have anything going on there the times that I went. So, I mean, they've already redone Splash Mountain in Disney World. Splash Mountain is now Tiana's Bayou Adventure. They completely rescanned it. So they're not going to do anything else to it for a while. They just reopened. Work will begin on this new land in 2020. They're filling in the river? Are they actually filling in the river? Or are you just have to take like a, you just have to walk over like a bridge or something. Five and we'll be keeping you updated as we learn more. Now, I know you've all been waiting for this one. I'm so mad about this. I have so many feelings about this. Okay, so back in the day, you had like the electrical parade or whatever it was. I forgot what it was called. And then like, Disneyland had like a new, like, was it the 60th anniversary? Some anniversary nighttime parade, right? And they discontinued the electrical parade, shipped it off to Disneyland for Disneyland to enjoy it before it was completely retired. We never got Disneyland's nighttime parade, and I was mad about it because I was like, give us a new fucking parade at night. What do you mean? Like, what do you mean? Give me a new fucking nighttime parade, please. And now they're doing it? Paint, where, what happened to Paint the Night? Okay, you had all the stuff for Paint the Night. Why didn't I get to see Paint the Night? And I guess it's like, oh, this is Disneyland exclusive. What the fuck ever? Why does Disney World, that is more expensive, not have this? I'm mad. Nighttime parades are back in Disney World. Disney Starlight will debut in Magic Kingdom in summer of 2025. This new parade is using new tech to create innovative floats featuring characters from Encanto, Peter Pan, Frozen, and more. Listen, listen, I have been to Japan Disney Parks. Their nighttime parade, amazing. If I show up, like, first of all, I don't actually have plans to go to Disney World anytime soon or kind of ever currently, but... If for some reason I go to Disney World and I go to this fucking parade and I'm like, oh, it's not as good as the Docomo fucking Disney Japan parade, I'm going to be mad. This is going to be the first nighttime parade in Magic Kingdom since 2016 when the Main Street Electrical Parade went back to the West Coast and later stopped running for good. Next, we got that Dino Land expansion. We've got confirmation on it, y'all. This 11-acre section of Animal Kingdom will begin construction this fall to transform Dino Land into a brand new experience. I don't hate this. Dino Land was not great, especially like so they closed down Primeval World because Primeval World was absolutely falling apart and it was scary for all the wrong reasons. But I loved Primeval World. It was a lot of fun to me personally. The but like the weird like, hey, let's go to like a fair in the middle, like a county fair kind of vibe in the middle of Animal Kingdom. That was weird to me. Also, like so I watched like the Jenny video about like. I guess Pandora, but like 
she talked about how like part of the lands of Animal Kingdom was supposed to be like mythical kingdom kind of. I forgot what it was specifically called, but it was supposed to be like dragons and unicorns and shit like that. I want that. That's not what you're giving me, but that's what I personally want. You know? And like, I'm sorry, are they making it in in Kanto? What are they doing with it? It's going to be completed in phases and be known as Pueblo de la Esperanza. This is a lush rainforest with Spanish style buildings. Okay, no, I'm... Described as being lived in, like the Harambe Africa section of the park and Animal Kingdom, that's okay. all about that authentic attention to detail. Beastly Kingdom, yeah. Restaurantosaurus yeah. will be transforming into a large hacienda to become one of the largest quick service restaurants in Disney World. This area will feature a carousel with Disney animals in a style inspired by wood carved art. Puebla de la Esperanza will also feature two signature attractions. Indiana Jones is officially replacing Dinosaur, and there will be a complete. I wonder if they're trying to, okay, so like they said that the carts from Dinosaur are going to be the same, I think. I read somewhere about that because I think there was like some drama about this. Um, Because I was like, is it going to be like the, the, Japan has a pretty cool like roller coaster attraction that looks kind of like this, but I'm like. If they're replacing Dinosaur, are they just reskinning it like they reskinned Splash Mountain? You know? Hey, Abby. If they're just... <laughs> Villains Kingdom, they're just going to pull the same shit they did with Galaxy's Edge. I mean, probably. But I'm just like, are they just reskinning Dinosaur? Like, are they changing nothing but, like, maybe the animatronics, you know? A new story being told in this ride exploring a Mayan temple. Indy's on the hunt for a rumored mythical yeah, creature there it that is. lurks within the temple and we're... Okay, yeah, so they're just they're just literally reskinning it and giving it a new story, but it's the same ride. Coming along to find it. Wonder if it'll look anything like a Carnotaurus. Now, Encanto is going to be the other major draw of this land. The Casita is coming to life and we're stepping into the story on the day that Antonio receives his magical gift that lets him speak to animals. This attraction that will take us through the Casa Madrigal and into Antonio's room, which has been transformed into a rainforest filled with animals. Both rides are going to open in 2027. Also an animal... That felt like... It feels like they're giving us the same ride twice. Like, you know, because based on what this looks like, this looks almost like. Like if you go on Pirates of the Caribbean, Caribbean, whatever, except there's no water, you know. Which I guess a lot of Disney rides are like that, but it's Animal Kingdom. And I guess this one's animal based, but like. I I feel like I don't know. It's not it doesn't look that unique if that if I don't know. Forest filled with animals. Both rides are going to open in 2027. Also in Animal Kingdom, it was slipped into the presentation that the new Zootopia show will be opening in the Tree of Life in the winter mm. of 2025 and will be I'm going to be honest. There's been rumors that they're they're closing down a Bugs Life. I think they've already closed down a Bugs Life. I don't hate this. I went to the Bugs Life show like a few times. I didn't really like it personally. It's also really dated. It never had big crowds in it. Like also kind of um just a Bug's Life is so old. I'm sorry. Like, you know, and it's not one of those things that it's like a beloved Disney movie that's gone down in history that people show their kids, right? At least I don't think so. Um, so I don't hate that they're like, hey, let's do it, Zootopia. I do find it a little weird that they're like, so it's thematically correct, I think, because it's like Animal Kingdom. I'm just a little like. They did just announce a sequel for Zootopia, actually. Because it's like, it's been years since Zootopia came out, but I think they just announced a sequel, didn't they? So never mind. Called Zootopia Better Together. We finally have some info about that Pirates Lounge coming to Magic Kingdom, plus a brand new lounge announcement. The just announced... This looks fancy. It also looks like you're in a hotel. 
Like just like a fucking, you're in like a nice Marriott. This looks like a nice Marriott hotel. Like, I, why, why do I care about this? What is Disney about this? Spaceship Earth themed lounge is short on details, but we can infer a bit from the concept art. From that concept art, we can see fireworks through the windows. So this space could be the current GM lounge that's inside the test track building and only accessible to GM employees. The windows and the angle of the view from the concept art look pretty similar. This is so empty. This is just empty ass space they have. At some point, this was something else, I feel. Like, I don't know. I feel like this room was something else. And they were like, oh, we have this space. Let's just make it like GM General Motors Lounge for GM employees. Like, I don't God. Or it could be in that Spaceship Earth Extra Lounge thing. I don't know. There's plenty of little lounge spaces sprinkled around Epcot that were. There's a lot of things that are just kind of sprinkled oh, around. All right. The poison. The poison for Cusco. <clears throat> the poison chosen specially to kill Cusco. Cusco's poison. It's always been a lounge for GM. Uh, hey, Anne. So, like, there's a lot of stuff that, like, they've repurposed because they've closed down what it was. Like, it was all of those, like, um, forget what they were they were called, but there were, like, little walkthroughs in Epcot where it was, like, future blah, blah, blah. Look at this stuff. And, like, all of that stuff closed down. And some of it turned into, like, the Art of Disney shop and some other stuff. Um... So, yeah, innovations. That's what it was. Innovations. And they closed down all the innovation stuff and, like, they've turned them into little shops and, and things. Um, I just feel like a lot of times Disney's just confused about what it's trying to do. Like, the Disney parks are just like, well, this costs money, so let's close it down and, I guess, put a shop there? Put a, put a Disney lounge in there? I don't know. That is a good ass right. put the there poison, for the, the poison for Cusco. The poison chosen specially to kill Cusco. Cusco's poison. That is a good ass fucking question. Why where is my Emperor's New Groove right? And the answer to that is Emperor's New Groove is it's too old. They're probably never gonna do that. And I am sad about it because I would love <laughs> I would love a Emperor's New Groove ride. Cat hat. Um would absolutely love that. I'm gonna be a hundred percent with you. Employees of the companies that sponsored those attractions. So I'm not sure exactly where it's going to go, but we'll definitely figure it out for you. I'm just like sad because that looks so just like a hotel like bar lounge. Like it just looks like a nice Marriott. Just go hang out in the Marriott. We've also got an update on that Pirate's Tavern in Magic Kingdom. This is going to serve up food and drink and be open to guests of all ages. This is a family tavern. They sure, actually describe the offerings as seaworthy selection of grogs and grubs. So we're not sure if that means this lounge will be serving alcohol in Magic Kingdom, but there is a bar in the concept art. So it seems like a strong possibility. So Both maybe? lounges will open in 2025. Where is it opening? Because like, what what is this? Because this, okay. We've got a few more details. Oh, I went backwards. Test track. Strong possibility. So these, right, I assume, oh, this was either a walk-up food thing. I'm guessing this is a menu. So this is a walk-up food thing. So what is it replacing? This looks like a quick service. Hmm. Both lounges will open in 2025. Now, let's talk test track. Construction has already started on this ride reimagining, and we've got a few more details about what to expect when it reopens next year. The queue will feature six... My favorite thing about test track is the amount of times that it's like, hey, look, here's a bunch of Chevys by Chevrolet. Like <laughs> exhibits that take guests through the history of vehicles and the ride will feature new show scenes showing technological advances and feature a scenic outdoor route. We saw mm. that in the concept art. Some of the descriptions of the changes to this ride, along with the building design elements, are clearly giving a nod to the former attraction that lived here, World of Motion. All right, big surprise okay. announcement that we totally were not expecting is a whole new land coming to Hollywood Studios in Disney World. You're actually doing something in Hollywood Studios? Monsteropolis is coming to the parks. It's the first Monsters, Monsters Inc. theme land officially announced. And human... Is Monsters Inc. still get just generating them money? Is it, a, is it still just printing them money? Because that is wild to me that they're doing Monsters Inc. Because Monsters Inc. is kind of old, I'm be honest. Like, they mentioned in the in the 
opening, like, oh, we're going to get this first type of coaster with Monsters, Inc., but, like, like, why? Like, why? Oh, oh, yeah, I think that's the Muppet. These are the Muppet buildings. I, I don't think uh, Muppet Vision 3D is going to survive. There was a, um, like a petition I saw on Facebook that was like, save Muppet Vision 3D. And I'm like, I, it isn't, it's not crowded ever. Like I've gone to it every year I went to Disney, um, despite my feelings about puppets. But it was never crowded. It was never busy. Like... So, like, there's, like, this beloved feeling about, like, oh, but it's, like, Jim Henson's work, but it's not generating ticket sales, so they're going to probably replace it. Because I'm pretty sure these are the buildings from up at Vision 3D. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. And this, I think, is also part of, like, you remember when they used to have, like, around Christmas time, they would have, like, those big Christmas light things from that family. I forget what the family is. And then they demolished all that. I feel like these are part of those buildings. Yeah, I don't know. Just, I I don't understand some of their choices. Like Encanto, fine. Like Encanto's new, relatively new. Like that's fine. Monsters Inc. is, I think, kind of dated. It's twenty three years old. I uh, I just feel like it's old. Yeah, the Osborns like lights. I feel like these buildings. It was near that. Um, so this is, I feel like, maybe the back of... Doesn't matter, anyway. Fans are welcome to visit Monsteropolis and step inside the factory in a brand new suspended coaster. A first for a Disney park. Yep, you get to ride... Super Smash Bros. They're not... I, I don't know what's going on with you and you, you thinking that they're going to do anything to Star Wars Land or Galaxy's Edge. They literally just built Galaxy's Edge. They're, they're not... They're not, the most they're going to do is add more stuff to it. They're not going to destroy Galaxy's Edge. Like, they're just not going to do that. They literally just finished it. Quote, unquote, finished it. So you don't have to worry about them doing stuff to Galaxy's Edge. Trust me. Like, it's fine. Don't worry about it. On one of the doors. Work on this land will begin next year, and we cannot wait for more details. Where's it going to go? Concept art looks like it's an indoor coaster, so could this be a major overhaul of Rock and Roller Coaster in this? Please don't touch Rock and Roller Coaster. Also, it I think it's near Muppet 3D, which is not near Rock and Roller Coaster. Um, so I don't think it's I don't think they're doing anything to Rock and Roller Coaster. I really like Rock and Roller Coaster, so I hope not. I do want more inside roller coasters. Like, that's hell yeah. Surrounding area, or is this a completely new, previously undeveloped chunk of land? We don't know. To coincide with the release of the Mandalorian and Grogu film in 2026, Millennium Falcon. There's. They're making a film. Y'all, I need to. Need to catch up to Mandalorian stuff, I guess. And Smuggler's Run in both Hollywood Studios and Disneyland will get a revamp. The ride's going to get a new overlay so that we're traveling alongside Mando and Grogu instead of Hondo and Aka and Chewbacca. They'll be creating the new ride scenes with Unreal Engine, which is part of the technology they use to film Star Wars shows and movies. Now let's... You're, you're doing a Smuggler's Run in the Millennium Falcon and you're hanging out with the Mandalorian. Okay. I mean, I'm behind on the Mandalorian. Maybe that makes sense. Or maybe they're just like, eh, shove it together. It's Star Wars. Doesn't matter. Like, <laughs> like I, I don't know. Um, I've I've done Smuggler's Run once. The It's one of those things where you have to have a certain amount of people in the ship or whatever. The quote unquote ship, the ride. Um, and so, like, I was stuck with, like, a family who were not paying attention. And it kind of semi grades you. Like, not really, but kind of, right? Um, and so I was stuck with a family who were not paying attention to what you were supposed to do on the ride. Because it's like, push this button. This person do this thing. This person do this thing. You're all supposed to work together as a team. And uh, that was not happening. And it really impacts your feelings on the, of the ride. Like, it just, like, it's frustrating. It is so frustrating. Like, just 
have fun and do the thing. But like when you're your fun is somewhat dependent on random ass strangers who aren't paying attention to what you're supposed to be doing. It's just really annoying. It's annoying to me anyway. Let's head over to Disneyland. Disneyland's gonna be celebrating its 70th anniversary, but it's Disney California Adventure that got the spotlight at D23. Avatar is coming to Disney California Adventure and it's not just gonna be one little walkthrough experience. Yo, this looks cool as hell. How, what are they? Mm. So I did hear rumors a few months ago about like Disney buying up a lot of the land and like building stuff around Disneyland because part of Disneyland's issue is because there's so much stuff around it that they can't expand. Um, so like what they doing though, where are they putting it though? It's going to be a whole land. This time, you're going to find it in DCA. It's going to be different from the world of Pandora in Animal Kingdom. This is going to be based on the second film of the franchise, The Way of Water. The one I still haven't watched because that really feels like something you watch on an airplane. And none of the airplanes I've been on recently have had it. It's also a really long movie, but like none of the planes I've been on have had that fucking movie. And it feels like something I want to watch on an airplane. Like, I just, I don't know how else to explain it. I could easily boot it up and watch it in my house, but I don't care to. And future films as well, including Avatar Fire and Ash, the title which was mm -hmm. just revealed at D23 as well for the third Avatar film. A brand new boat ride will debut in this land. Doesn't look to be okay. a repeat or overlay of the Navi River Journey concept. Navi River Journey was boring as hell. Like, it's relaxing and it gets you out of the heat if it's really hot, but it's, it's not great. It is not great. Except the boat and, and you could tell it's not great because it doesn't have crazy fucking line lines like times like you could tell because it takes it does not take you very long to get on that ride and the concept art looks much bigger and the, the one fucking animatronic they have one animatronic on the navi river journey one and th there's been times when it has broken down and has disappeared and then they like put it back out there but they only have one animatronic only one. The surroundings are way spookier. Kind of looks like you're traveling through a Pandoran swamp. The ride was described as a thrilling excursion and a dynamic, intense, and emotional experience. This may be the boat ride tech we've- We're gonna try to scare you so you cry. <laughs> seen patents for recently that would allow for much more control over the boat's direction and movements than in a typical flume ride. A new Coco ride has been announced. The very first Coco ride is coming to Disney California Adventure. This boat ride okay. will take inspiration from classic attractions like Haunted Mansion and Pirate. I'm gonna say it. This feels like they heard about all the fans talking about the Three Caballeros ride in Mexico and Epcot, where they were like, you know, breathe more life into it, reskin it to, to be Coco, or at least like fix it up because it's kind of slightly falling apart because it's an old ride. And like there was a lot of like fan renditions of like how to turn the Three Caballeros into a Coco ride. And that's what this looks like. That's what this looks like. Like, that is what that is. <laughs> of the Caribbean as we join Miguel on a trip to the land of the dead. Josh tomorrow promised groundbreaking animatronics technology and lots of it in this ride. They're going to start construction in 2026. Now, Walt Disney A Magical Life is a brand new show. I hated that fucking puppet. I hate this. I hate this. Construction in 2026. Mm -mm. No, now, Walt Disney A Magical Life is a brand new show coming to Disneyland that will feature the first ever animatronic of Walt Disney. The idea is to bring guests into Walt's office to see what he might be dreaming up. After its initial run okay. in 2025, the show will alternate with great moments with Mr. Lincoln. The West Coast version of okay. Tiana's Bayou Adventure will open at the start of the holiday season this year on November 15th. So they are basically just completely probably rescanning every single Splash Mountain they possibly can to Tiana. So if y'all wanna if y'all wanna do Splash Mountain, y'all better hurry. Your time is limited. Critter Country is gonna Tokyo still has it for now, and Tokyo might not change it over because Tokyo is basically renting the IP, sort of. But like they also might because it will, you know, further ticket sales. 
going to be renamed Bayou Country to go along with the ride opening. And this area will include the many adventures of Winnie the Poop, the Davy Crockett Explorer Canoes, yay! The Hungry Bear Barbecue Jamboree, Poo Corner, and the new Ray's Berets and Lewis's Critter Club. Some of the area may open before the ride on November 15th, and some of these are already or still open right now. Two new rides are coming to Avengers Campus in Disney California Adventure, and it will okay. double the size of Avengers Campus. First up, Avengers Infinity Defense. This is the one that we've seen the ride vehicle concept on the expo floor for, and Disney shared a few more details about the ride. This is the one where you're going to battle King Thanos in this ride, and Disney shared that you'll visit lots of places in the MCU like Asgard, Wakanda, and New York City. From the ride okay. vehicle concept, this appears it'll be similar to Peter Pan's Neverland Adventure in Tokyo Disney Sea's Fantasy Springs. And the second ride, Stark Flight Lab. This is the brand newly announced ride that features two-person pods on whirling arms that take you on a simulated flight mission. Robert Downey. This could be cool. This could also make me probably motion sick. <laughs> Junior will return to play Iron Man. Winnie the Pooh is old-ish, but Winnie the Pooh is beloved. Like... When I say, like, I don't really think about Monsters, Inc. I mean, I guess, like, in some places, like, Monster Inc. is really big. Winnie the Pooh consistently is in, like, people's minds, kind of. Like, Winnie the Pooh continues to be a big deal. So, like, I'm not surprised that they're doing, like, Winnie the Pooh stuff. Winnie the Pooh is always big. And for this ride, and this one looks kind of similar to the experience at Universal Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey. Construction... Fuck. Okay, Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey is the first ride ever I have gotten motion sick on. In fact, I was so confused about why I was so sick because I never got motion sick back then. And I was like, I don't understand why I'm so sick. And I really, it might be one of those things where it's like whatever I'm looking at isn't actually real because they have like projections and stuff. It begins next year on this Avengers Campus expansion. Now, California isn't getting all the Marvel action. More Marvel is coming mm. to Shanghai and Hong Kong. There's a brand new Spider-Man coaster coming to Shanghai Disneyland, and this one looks like Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. From the concept art, we can- You still haven't gone on, on Cosmic Rewind. I haven't been to the park since that reopened. See that it looks very similar to the lift into the ride building on Cosmic Rewind, and a track and ride vehicle with similar movement capabilities. They. Sp they made a Winnie the Pooh horror movie because the original Winnie the Pooh, not the Disney owned Winnie the Pooh, but the original Winnie the Pooh went. Um, oh, what is it called? Where people can now use the IP, quote unquote IP. Um, ah, public domain. Yeah, it hit the original Winnie the Pooh hit public domain. Which means that other people can now do stuff with it. Um, which is why there's like this whole thing of like Winnie the Pooh with a red shirt. That is not public domain. That is Disney owned. Winnie the Pooh without red shirt is public domain. So it's important that there's very diff like that you understand the differences of that. But original Winnie the Pooh went public domain. So people, yeah, people are making horror movies because that's like, the first thing when some beloved like uh, children's specific thing uh, hits public domain. I mean, I they were like, people are making Winnie the Pooh the horror movies. And I was like, yeah, that, that absolutely tracks. Like, I, I don't know what to tell you. Spent so much on that ride. Did we really think they'd only build one version of it? Now this one will take guests along with Spider-Man instead of the Guardians. Hong Kong Disneyland is expanding Star. Also, that seems fun. Like. Spider-Man rides, I feel like, are always fun. Expo with another Spider-Man themed ride. This one is super low on details, but from that concept art, am I mistaken or does that look like Spidey and Doc Ock are in a tower of terror like drop shaft? Pride Lands will be a mm. brand new area of the newly renamed second park in Disneyland Paris, Disney Adventure Park. It's going to mm. include dining and shopping, character meet and greets, and a brand new ride. This ride is going to take you into the caverns of Pride Rock and oh, then follow... Oh, it's like live action Lion King. Mm. I don't think I particularly care for live action Lion King. To be fair, I haven't actually watched the live action Lion King. I kind of dropped off watching the live action movies. Um... But, like, I don't know. I want, like, I want cartoon Lion King. Simba's story, Josh DeMauro claims, it's going to make you feel like you just stepped. It's going to be based on the animated one. I mean, it looks, first of all, it looks like a reskinning of Splash Mountain. I'm going to assume they're just basically making Splash Mountain, except 
not making it Splash Mountain, if that makes any sense. Like, they're just, it's it looks like the same thing. But it looks like the remake. It looks like the quote-unquote live action. The concept art just looks wrong. Okay, maybe. Into the movie. Disney Adventure World is getting a lot of attention in the next few years with Frozen Land opening in 2026 Ooh. and a new nighttime spectacular coming to the park that year as well. All right, ready for a bunch more cruise ship? Cool, my favorite thing, cruises. In addition to the four currently under construction or nearing a first sailing date, Disney just announced literally four more ships coming. To is the Disney Cruise Line just popping the fuck off? Like, I, like, for a cruise line, Disney Cruise Lines are really expensive. Are they just, like, going crazy? Like, are they just, like, super crazy popular? Like, why? Do you need so many? Because, like, this does not mean, like, oh, they have eight in total. They have a bunch of ships already sailing. They have four that they're still working on, and they just announced four more. So they just have, like, they're adding eight ships. So I'm just like, what is what is going on? What's what's happening here? Are they cheap to build? I doubt it. Also, cruise, cruises are so bad for the environment. Like, cruise ships are so bad for the environment. It's bad. Um, and I just like, I don't know the audacity, like I just <laughs> something to the Disney cruise line fleet with the five already sailing. That makes for 13, 13 ships. Okay. A bunch of getting retired soon for repairs, but that's just repairs, right? That's not like them getting retired indefinitely ships in total. These new ships will start sailing between 2027 and 2031. Ships, names, and itineraries are still in development, Jesus. but we did get some other Disney cruise news. We got another look at Disney The Tale of Moana debuting on the Disney Treasure. It's going to include a 15-foot tall puppet of Teka, the largest production element for a DCL show so far. And Hercules has been announced as a stage show debuting on the Disney Destiny. Phew, okay, Disney may not be taking us to Mars yet, but these are some pretty major announcements and there are no maybe possibly one day blue sky ideas anymore. Every single announcement is either in development or breaking ground soon, which means there is a lot to plan for if you're headed to the Disney parks. Luckily, you've got us here at DFB to help you plan and prepare. And if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to this channel and sign up for our free newsletter. Those newsletter subscribers got all this news two days ago. So if you want to be the first to know what's happening at Disney, sign up. It's totally free. Thanks for listening, everyone. And thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon. The <laughs> a 15 foot tall puppet will that convince me to go <laughs> my favorite things puppets on cruises um i mean like fucking one thousand two hundred fifty five dollars for two people for three days in the bahamas but i also have to deal with children that's only three days i don't know man I don't, I don't know. Also, that does not include my transport to fucking where, whatever port they're coming out of. Probably Florida. Like, I have to go down to Florida or wherever. Um, and that's just to the Bahamas. Like, that's probably one of their cheaper ones because it's close by. I, I don't know, man. All the children. I just, no, thank you. Let's see. Yeah, you know why the industry took a beating during COVID? Because the amount of cruise ships that try to go to port and just for port to be like, no, because you're some like basically someone on board might be infected or is infected with COVID. And so your whole ship is basically infected. So you can't come to port and release hundreds of infected people into port. Like, I've never been more vindicated in my life <laughs> about my feelings about cruise ships. Like... 100% in my life. <laughs> like, Jesus. The 15 foot tall puppet, or you run away from it into international waters. Gee, I, I just. 
Cruise ships are not good for the environment. They're not good for the oceans. I don't want to be trapped on a boat. I, you know, you sh- shifty shit happens in international waters. I also don't want to be trapped on a boat surrounded by screaming sick children. Like, that's just me personally. Um, and I know that some of these ships have like adult, most of them probably have like adult only areas, but that's not going to be like an adult only show. Like I don't get to go see the show and it's adult only, right? I have to go there when all the children are there coughing on me or whatever. (laughs) People get sick on cruise ships. Okay. Cruise ships are just floating virus containers. Like you can't, you cannot convince me otherwise. I, I don't know. This is my paranoia coming out. Not to say I'm, like, 100%, like, I will never. I don't know. Some friends could be like, hey, we're planning this, and it's affordable, and do you want to go? We've planned it out. And they could convince me, maybe, but I doubt it. Like, I just very much doubt it. (laughs) My friends would have to be, like, would have to do some heavy lifting to get me interested in going. (laughs) 